Agape Church and Friends. Welcome to the Building Up Podcast, episode number 114. I'm David. As always, thank you guys for being with us. On this episode of the podcast, we are talking about the purpose of prayer, or one of the primary purposes of prayer. Now, uh, as I record the podcast, we've just started a series on prayer um, during our Lord's Day gatherings at Agape Church, and uh, we are uh, going to spend about six or seven weeks talking, teaching through, exhorting the church to prayer. Uh, and and I, th- I think that um, all of us, if you're a believer, if you've been a believer for a while, we've had the experience of wrestling and struggling with prayer, probably for many different reasons. And you may have found at times in your life that you're in a place of prayerlessness. Uh, Maybe you're there now, or maybe you can just remember times where you were really struggling to pray. I would also say that part of prayerlessness is, is not just the absence of praying, but also sometimes prayerlessness can be about the absence of joy when you pray. So there are times that you're in your Christian walk, and again, maybe you're there right now, or maybe you've had experiences in the past where you would say, well, I was praying. I got, I'm, I'm, I'm actually going through the act of prayer, but it seems like a chore. It, it seems like a responsibility. If someone were to talk about delighting in prayer, having joy in prayer, that would be a very foreign concept. And so those are part of the reasons that we're spending a while talking about prayer as a church, because I believe that it is critically necessary as believers that we pray, because I believe God has given us prayer. It's a gift, but he's given us prayer so that we might abide with him and abide with Christ. So it's critically necessary that we pray. And I want us as a church, and and I want this for my own life and family, is that we would grow in knowing how important it is to pray and let that lead us to actually doing it, to making time to discipline ourselves so that we pray. But I also want us to pray as a delight, that that we don't pray as a a chore, a boring responsibility, but that we delight in prayer. And, and I do believe that is not only possible, but I believe that is, the, that is the intended way for us to pray when we actually understand what the purpose of prayer is. So I want us to grow in knowing the necessity of prayer, but also want us to grow in the joy of prayer. I want that in my life. I want that for our church. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're outside of Agape, I'm thankful that you take time to listen to this podcast, and I want that for you as well, wherever you are, that you would delight in prayer and you would actively engage in it. And so I think one of the beginning steps of praying well and delighting in prayer is to just understand the purpose of it. If you don't understand the purpose of something, then you you are very likely to not do it or not do it well. And and even this week in having conversations with people from our church about prayer, I've had two different people tell me that either they themselves or someone they know have struggled with prayer because they didn't understand why would you pray. And in both of those scenarios, they mentioned how the question was, if God knows everything that you need, then what is the point of praying? Because you're not telling God anything he doesn't know. <laughs> and you're not asking God for anything that he, that he isn't aware of already. So, so why pray? And I think a lot of people wrestle with that, that, that question. And I think even if you were to say something like, well, we pray because God told us to. Or if you were to say we pray because even though God is aware of what we need, he still wants us to reach out to him. And ask for these things. And I I think there's some semblance of uh, truth in that. James tells us in in the New Testament that there are some things we don't have because we haven't asked God for it. Because we're just trying to attain it on our own and our own power. So we haven't actually prayed and that's why we don't have it. So I do think that is 
there's some semblance of truth there. But even if you were to say that, that doesn't mean you're going to now generate joy in your life as you pray. That may be where the drudgery comes from. I know I have to do this. I know that there is a need for me to pray, so that's what I'm I'm going to do. But there's not a delight in it. So I think that's where we have to understand that there are many purposes to prayer in the Word. Certainly, asking God for our needs and the needs of others is one of the purposes. Expressing thanksgiving to God is one of the purposes. Um, expressing sorrow to God. Trying to learn and praying to learn is one of the purposes. Uh, joining together with other believers and being united to them is one of the purposes. There are many, many purposes in the Bible for prayer. But I believe the primary purpose has nothing to do with making our requests known before God. I believe one of the primary purposes of prayer is to be with God, to be in His presence and for God to be present with us because prayer ultimately is this life connection relationally to our Father and to His Son, Jesus Christ, through the power of the Spirit. And and look, that may seem really mysterious, right? And sometimes it's hard to connect to things that are really mysterious. The idea that prayer brings us into the presence of God. And, and we may even say, I've, I've prayed many, many, many times, and I, it doesn't feel like I'm in the presence of God. But in faith, I believe it's a reality that when we pray and we're praying uh, with a sincere heart, we are reaching out to God and God has promised that he will be with us, that we will be present with him. And I think that is one of the primary purposes of prayer. I believe we see this in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus is teaching on prayer and he tells his followers when you pray, obviously there, there's an expectation that his followers will pray. He says, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. So Jesus is saying, there are some people who love to pray publicly because they enjoy being seen and they enjoy being the center of attention and they enjoy people thinking well of them for how well they pray. And, and Jesus says, if that's the purpose of prayer, then the reward of prayer becomes the praise of men and, and they may receive that reward, but that's all they're getting out of prayer. So, so don't be that way. Don't have that mindset. And then he goes on to say that when you pray, in verse 7, he says, When you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. And he goes on to say, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him, uh, which is what we were just talking about a moment ago. So Jesus is saying, when you pray, don't get, don't get so focused on what you're going to say and, and think that the... The only way God's going to hear you is if you have the perfect phrase or you say the quote-unquote magic words, and, and if you do that, then God will hear you. Jesus says that's how Gentiles think, people that are not even connected to the body of Christ or the family of God. That's how they think is that, that prayer is like this magic or this secret mantra, and if, as long as you say the right words, then God will answer, he will hear. And Jesus, that's not the way you should think at all. Now, in both of those scenarios, Jesus is not saying, first of all, don't pray publicly, um, because we do see public and corporate prayer in the church throughout the New Testament. So he's not saying don't do that. He's also not saying that it doesn't matter what you say when you pray. Uh, we're going to talk about this on the Lord's Day gathering sermons and maybe on the podcast at some point, but praying God's word and letting the word of God, letting the word of God guide and guard your prayers and what you pray for is very important. But Jesus in this teaching is getting to the heart of the matter. And I believe you find the heart of the matter and the purpose of prayer in verse six of Matthew six. When you pray, 
Go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. That, I believe, is the heart, the primary purpose of prayer. It is to go and be with God and to receive the reward of praying in secret. And what is that reward? I believe it is the presence of God. And God may give us other things. He may bless us with all types of spiritual blessings. But I believe the reward that we're after when we pray is to be in the presence of God. And to have an audience with our Savior and to know that He is with us and we are with Him. And again, I, I, I know that may be mysterious, but I believe that in faith we can believe that. It's interesting to me, I've been thinking about this this week, but you know, so often you see it mentioned in the New Testament that when Jesus prayed, He would look up. Now, I think often that what we're trained to do is bow our heads. Uh, as a sign of respect, like a bowing down to God, which you certainly see in the Bible. But Jesus, the Bible says, would often he would look up as he prayed. I found myself actually doing that a little this week as I've been praying, is actually trying to just look up this idea and reminding myself that, that I'm in the presence of God as I pray, that I'm looking up to him. He is high and lifted up. And yes, he's with me, present with me as I pray. And and even that posture helps remind me of that. And I believe that is the primary purpose by which we pray, is to be with God. And I think that's where the delight comes from. Because we're not just praying as a checklist of things that we need, but we can delight in knowing that God invites us to come and be in his presence. I believe that you can say God loves to be with his people as they pray and that he would love to be with you and for you to be in his presence. I believe there is biblical reason to believe that is true. This week, I I had a very, very cool experience, but um, there's a a gentleman, a, a friend of mine, I met him probably about a decade ago at this local park. And I was there with my family and he was there with his family. And we just struck up a conversation and somewhere in that conversation, I think we, we, we come to find out we knew some, some of the same people and we're both believers. And so we ended up having a great conversation. We exchanged numbers and um, so we could text one another. And, and, and ever since then, for the last 10 years, we, we've stayed in um, contact and we may go a long time without speaking, but um, and, and I don't think we've hardly ever done anything together uh, with our families or anything like that. But we just, brothers in Christ, we just will text and encourage one another. And I will say, I think he's texted and encouraged me far more than I have him to my own shame. But uh, we'll communicate about Christ and his word and praying for one another. And, and that's been this partnership, friendship that's developed over the last decade. Well, I haven't heard from my friend in several years. I would say the last three or four years, I haven't heard from him. And I don't think he's heard from me. I think we've seen each other's social media posts. We've probably commented on a post or something, but we haven't really communicated or talked. And so this week, out of the blue, he texts me to let me know that he was praying for me. And in that text, he told me very specifically what he was praying for. And then he gave me a verse, a passage of scripture that he was just talking about. He had been thinking a lot about lately. And I looked at that text and I haven't heard from this guy in three or four years. Haven't talked to him. Haven't posted anything on Facebook, but when I, or any other social media about these things. But what he didn't know is the thing that he told me about in that text that he was praying for me about is the exact thing that had been on my heart and my mind that I had been talking to God about over the last several weeks. Part of my character, part of my maturity as being a pastor that I wanted to grow in, part of my ministry to other people that I wanted to grow in. And I, even the night before, I had been thinking about this and how I wanted to pursue this part of my spiritual character being developed. And it was the exact thing. He texted and said, this is what I'm praying for you. The exact thing. 
very specifically. And the passage of scripture that he told me that he had been meditating on recently was my sermon text or part of my sermon text for that week's sermon. And I was studying that same passage of scripture, Hebrews chapter four, verse 15, which is part of a passage of scripture that is talking about drawing close to God. Hebrews 4, 15 For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are yet without sin. In verse 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. The exact thing that we're talking about, we do through prayer. And and here's my point in sharing that with you. What I know about is that my friend, he has been with God. Because as he's been praying for me, God met with him. And I'm not saying he saw an image. I'm not saying that he audibly heard a voice. I'm saying God laid something on his mind to pray for me. And God laid a verse on his heart. And he texted me and he shared the verse and he shared what he was praying. And it showed me God was with him as he prayed. You would never convince me of anything else. I don't believe in coincidences anyway, but there is no way that's a coincidence. God had met with him and, and my point is, God will do that to us. He will do that for us. He will do that for you. God meets us when we pray. We are in his presence when we are seeking God in prayer. And he will put things on our heart and on, on our mind to pray for ourselves and for others. We will experience that. And there is joy in that. There is something about that that says, yes, I want more of this. I want more of being with God in that way. I want more of experiencing him. And I believe that is a primary purpose of prayer. And I believe it is the key to us to become more disciplined in praying and also to receive joy in it is to know God meets with us when we pray. So I hope you will consider this and and take this forward. I'm over time, but I hope that this has meant something to you. We'll, we'll, We'll kind of stoke that fire in your heart for prayer. And if so, I'd love to hear from you. Please reach out, contact me. And I'd love to talk more about this. Until next time, church, grace and peace to your family. Thank you for listening to the Building Up Podcast, a ministry of Agape Church in Pinson, Alabama. If you have a question about today's podcast or would like to suggest a topic for the future, please email us, buildingup at agapepinson.com. To subscribe to this podcast, simply search for Building Up from Agape Church in your favorite podcast app. so fierce, he looks straight into me. I said, son, I'll give